Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I teach at the University of Colorado Boulder, previously at UC Berkeley and UCLA. Today I'm continuing with my series of reading through Grimnismal in detail, stanza by stanza in Old Norse and explaining what the Old Norse says as I go. This follows on my series doing the same thing with Hovamol and Voluspal. And uh, I've mentioned in a couple of these videos, but I'll mention again just some basic facts about this series. I'm using uh, reconstructed medieval pronunciation, roughly what the Old Norse would have sounded like in about the 1200s when this poem was written down. The manuscript, uh, or well, the manuscripts in the case of Grimnismal are not written in runes, but because so many people request the runes uh, for these stanzas, I have made a personal interpretation of the stanzas into late Viking Age younger Futhark, reflecting approximately the form uh, that these stanzas would have been written in, in say the late 900s, roughly when the poem might originally have been composed. Those runes do reflect the somewhat more archaic stage of the language, s instead of er, umb instead of um, etc., but otherwise follow the uh, language of the text closely. Also, since Grimnismal is preserved in two manuscripts, it's one of the few Eddic poems that is, uh, it's both in the Codex Regis and in AM 748 one quarto. I am following the Codex Regis for the most part, but if there is a pretty obvious uh, better reading um, from AM 748 one quarto, I sometimes insert that without comment, or uh, if there's an obvious better reading from when Snorri quotes it in the prose edit, but otherwise um, I try to stick pretty close, including when um, the Codex Regis version isn't necessarily uh, always favored by modern editors or translators. Alright, so this installment begins with stanza 17. Pri si vex och ho grassi, vidar sland vidi, en thar moger ov latsk ab mars baki, hrøken at hevna fodr. So, vidar's land grows with brush, hrisi in the dative, and with high grass, ho grassi in the dative. Uh, Vivi may be the dative singular of vither wood, so it's growing with high grass and with brush and with wood. Uh, I've also speculated about whether this might be uh, an error for vida, meaning that it's grown widely with high grass and with brush weeds, uh, or that it is the wide land of vidar, but I try not to speculate too much. And there, the son lets himself uh, avenge his father, so maybe he's preparing himself to avenge his father, Hevna Fodr, uh, bold, he is bold, frickin', from a horse's back, of Mars Baki, perhaps implying a different version of uh, Vidar killing Fenrir, in which he is uh, horseback, which would be different from both the uh, sword fight in Voluspa and the uh, jaw-ripping exercise uh, where he's on foot, that's told of in Vothrid the Small and in Snorri's Prose Edda. Stanza 18, this is one of the ninth stanzas, so I'll read it word by word, even though I've more or less been doing that with all the stanzas. Andhrim nir latr i eldhrim ni sahrim ni sovin, fleskabetst en that foir vitu, huat einherjar alask, or vid huat einherjar alask. The viv is not in uh, the Codex Regius. So, and Hrimnir lets Sahrimni cooked in Eldhrimnir. So, uh, presumably the verb vera to be or verda uh, to become to get is uh, left out here. So, and Hrimnir is letting the meat of Sahrimnir cook in Eldhrimnir. If we read the prose edda by Snorri, and Hrimnir is the cook in Valhol, Sahrimnir is the pig whose pork the Einherjar, the uh, warriors in Valhol, eat, and Eldhrimnir is the cauldron that that pork is cooked in. Now, Hrimnir, that element that's in all those names, could be related to Hramer, which means noise, or to Hrim Frost. Either way, it's hard to see what exactly uh, we should make of these names, as An Hrimnir uh, would be against Noisemaker or against Frostmaker. Uh, Eldhrimnir, the cauldron, would then be fire, noise, or fire, Frostmaker, Sahrimnir would be sea noisemaker or sea frostmaker, so hard to make literal sense of these names. The best of flesh, best fleska, the best of fleshes or meats, that of course would be Sahrimnir's pork. 
but few know it for vitu thought upon what vid what the anherior again the warriors and Valhol, the alone fighters uh, are fed so few know what the anherior eat stanza 19 gera ok freka sedr gun tamidur rodigur heria folder en vid vin eit lopen govagur odin a livir so the battle tamed or battle accustomed gun tamidur victorious rodigur father of armies heria folder this is odin of course feeds sether geri and freki these are odin's wolves according to uh, snorri and the prose edda geri is probably related to the adjective ger meaning hungry and freki to the adjective frecker meaning greedy so basically uh, hungry and greedy but odin and odin lives always liver a fifth vin eight on wine alone and of course that is Weapon noble Odin, Vopen Govagur Odin. Sansa 20, a personal favorite. Hugin ok munin, flu hahwerian dag, Jorman grund uvir. Ok ek of Hugin ad han after ne comet, in Sjomsk mer um munin. So Hugin and Munin are Odin's ravens, and uh, Hugi, of course, means thought, so this would be the thought. Munin would apparently be related to Muna, meaning to remember, and so the raven's names are often translated as thought and memory, which is probably uh, what's intended. They fly every day, fluga huerian dag, over the great ground, Jormungrun, so over the earth. I fear Oonk that Hugen, I fear about Hugen, Oonk ek of Hugen, that he may not come back. So both the T appended to komi, the subjunctive third person singular present of koma to come, and the ne are negative. So this is double negated that he won't not come back, but it means won't come back. Though I see myself, literally, but this is used for fear also, though I fear Siomp more mer about Munin. So I fear that Hugen won't come back, but I fear more about Munin, more about memory than about thought. Sansa 21, Thuter thund, unir thiod witness fisker flow the e. Or straumer, thicker of mikil, valglami at vada. So thund uh, is a river name. This is probably from Thenya, or that root meaning to expand, so maybe a flooded river. It whistles or howls, Thuter from Thyota, class 2 strong verb. And Thyod Vitnir's fish lives in the flood, Unir i Flodi. Now, Vitnir, which literally means witness, is often used in Eddic poetry to mean monsters. So this would be people monster, Thyod Vitnir, the monster for the people, for the nation. Who is the fish of the people monster? Well, often, including in this very poem, we see uh, supernatural things called not simply by their name, but by name, possessive, and then the thing that it is. So Yggdrasil is often called Yggdrasil's Oscar. Uh, Fenrir is often called Fenris Ulfr. So this could just possibly be simply Jormungandr uh, as another name for that serpent, Thjodvitnir, but then it's being called Thjodvitnis Fisker, and it's a fish because it lives in water. Part of the semantic taxonomy of Old Norse is that anything that lives in water is a fish. So whatever the case, the apparent reference is to uh, Jormungandr, whether Thjodvitnir is just another word for uh, Jormungandr, hard to say, but I think so. The river's stream or current, Orstraumr, seems too big, thicker of Mikkel, for the slaughter crowd to wade. So for possibly the Einherjar to wade, this river uh, maybe needs to be waded by the Einherjar or perhaps by some other uh, group of dead men, maybe the dead men who are on their way to or from hell. Sansa 22. Valgrind hetir erstender velle o helog fyr helgum durum. Forn er su grind, and that foer vitu, hue hon er los lokin. So, Valgrind, slaughter gate, gate of the slaughtered of the slain, it is called, which stands on a plain, stender o veli, holy before holy doors, helogfir, helgum durum. 
that gate is ancient, so grins er forn, and but few know it, for vitu thought, how she, i.e. it, because grin is feminine, is closed into a lock, loken i los, i.e. locked. So it's an old gate, but few know how it's locked. Sansa 23. Fim hundred golva och um fjorum tugum, swo hig ek bilskirni med bugum. Rana thera erek rept vita, means fetek mest magar. So 500 of floors, i.e., 500 floors, but of course 100 could mean 120 here. Uh, keep that in mind, although for simplicity's sake and for my own. Uh, not so opposite mass skills, I'll stick with, just translate this as 100. So, uh, 500 floors and 40, I think, Bill Skirnir, this is uh, Thor's Hall, and then we have to supply a verb like Hava or Ega to have with its, uh, with its windings, with its turnings, with its corners. So, this hall has that many uh, floors if you count all the ways that its convoluted design uh, allows. Of those houses, rana thera, genitive plural, which I know to be roofed, erek vita reft, I know ek fate, my sons, means magar, because this is Odin talking about Thor, the biggest. So of all the houses which I know have roofs, I know my sons is the biggest. Sansa 24. Fim hundri thura okum fjorum tugum, swo hig ek at valholdvera. Otta hundred einherja ganga or enum durum, tho er ther fara at vitni at vega. So 500 doors and 40, I think that there are at Valholu, uh, vera at Valholu, I think there are at Valhol. 800 einherjar, again the warriors in Valhol, go out of the the single doors or enum durum, probably in, meaning out of each door. When so er, they go to fight the monster at vega at vitni. Again, with that word vitnir meaning monster. In this case, almost certainly meaning Fenrir, the wolf that will kill Odin. So uh, the one that he wants the Einherjar to fight most of all. Sansa 25. Heidrun hetir gate er stender holu o herja fathers. Och biter av laras limum. Skapker fylla hon skal en skira mjadar kno atsu veg vanask. Heithrun is the name of a goat which stands on the army father's hall, so on top of Valhol, Odin's hall, and bites off or bites from the limbs of Larather, a tree. She shall fill hon skal fylla skapker beer barrels of the clear mead in skira miadar, and that drink su veg will not diminish with kno being used just to stand in for another modal verb like moon perhaps so will not diminish vanask in the infinitive 26 ekthir nir hetir hjortr er stender o hollu heria folders ok biter of laras limum and of Hans Hornum, Drupper i Huergelmi, Thadan Egu Votten, Ol Vega. So, Ekthirnir, Oak Thorn, is the name of a stag, Hjorter, who stands on the hall of uh, Army Father, Heria Father's Hall, again on top of Valhol, and, be, and bites from the limbs of Lara, this tree. And from his horns, and of Hans Hornum, drops into Huergelmir. Quergilmir is the spring under the root of Yggdrasil and Hel, or Nibelhammer, according to uh, Snorri's prose edda, and we can read that name as Cauldron Noisemaker, where Cauldron Gilmir, probably from Galm, Noise. And from there, all the waters have their ways. Thadan, Ol, Foten, Egu, Vega. And now in Sansa 27, we start getting the names of a bunch of rivers, so I hope you're ready for this. I have traditionally been trying to make extra sure that I'm reading or interpreting every word in every ninth stanza. 27, this is going to be tough. A lot of these are river names that don't have very obvious meanings. I'll uh, give meanings or translations for them where it seems reasonable to do so. 
Seethe och vid, sycken och eken, svall och gunthro, fjorm och fimbelthul, rin och renandi, gippel och goppel, gommel och gervimmel, ther herba um hod gotha, thin och vin, thol och hol, grod och gunthorin. All right, well, seethe would mean long, vid, wide, sycken, perhaps an old or alternative. Uh, Past participle to sick at a seek, so the sot one. Aiken would mean made of oak. Svol would mean cool. Gunthro, battle trough. Hard to do anything with fjorm. Fimblethul would be mighty. Perhaps related to the thuler part might be, thuler might be related to thuler, meaning order, a word that often comes up in, in Hovamol. Green would be the Rhine River, so that at least is a real river. Renandi, running. Uh, Gomol would mean old. Gervimel, ger is spear. Uh, then we have this parenthetical remark. Uh, these, there, those, flow around, huerva um, the gold of the gods, hod goda. So rivers are often pictured as concealing gold or treasure in uh, Norse myths and sagas. And then vin could be meadow, if it's a long eye, it could be wine. Uh, hol would mean hall. Grod could be related to uh, the root in greedy. Gunthorin, battle daring, something like that. Maybe not all these names are meant to be uh, specifically meaningful. In Sansa 28, we keep going with river names. Vina heter ein, onur vegsvin, thredja thjodnoma, nit och not, non och ron, slid och krid, sylger och ilger, vid och von, vond och strand, gjol och lefter, thär falla gumnum när, er falla till heljar hedan. Even fewer of these make a lot of sense. Vexvin could be road wise. Uh, Theothnoma contains Theoth, meaning people or nation. Uh, hard to do a whole lot with the rest of these. Vaughn, Hope, Strand is, is beach or like English Strand. Gjol could be related to Yell, like in Gjallarhorn. So a loud river, perhaps. And then at the end, those fall near men, Nair Gumnum, who fall from here to hell. Erfala, Hedan, Til. Heliar. In 29, we hear about a couple more rivers. Kornt och Ornt och Hellaugart fär, där skal Thorvada, Hverjan dag er han döma fär, at aski Yggdrasils, því at Åsbru, bren Ologa, Helog, Fortent Loa. Kornt and Ornt and two Kerlaugs, these Thor shall wade every day, fär. Thor skal vada hverjandag, when he goes to judge Erhan fer Duma at the ash of Yggdrasil, so at Yggdrasil, the ash tree. Because the Osbru, the god bridge, Bifrost, the, or Bilrost, the uh, rainbow, this is the bridge from Midgard to Oskar, brins, brins, burns, bren, all over, all, with flame, loga, the heuli waters, heilog voten, floa. I think floa is a hotbox. I think it only occurs here. Uh, some have connected it with the root in English low, as in an animal lows or bellows. Um, others assume that it must have something to do with fire because the, the waters uh, are said to be burning with fire. So maybe something like the waters are seething. Well, we've had some river names. Now for some horse names in stanza 30. Gladr og gulir, gler og skeidbrimir, silvren topter og sinir, gisel og kvalhovnir, gul topper og letfetti, Theim rida asir yom, dag huern er ther duma fara at aski yggdrasils. So, glather could mean glad, glare glass, scathe could be related to um, the root in uh, actually like the word ski, but a branch or a fence post, something like that. Uh, Silveren topter, that is how the name is is in the uh, Codex Regius. I think it's silver and topper in um, AM748 one quarto. Uh, if it is topper, that could be something like silver top, maybe horse the silverish mane. Uh, Giesel could mean hostage, gul topper, gold top, so maybe a golden mane. Letfeti, something like lightfoot. At any rate, the Asir gods ride those horses, Thaim Yom, every day, dag, when they go to judge Ertherfara Duma at Yggdrasil, at the ash of Yggdrasil, the ash tree of Yggdrasil. 31. Thryor hötr standa o thryo vega undan aski Yggdrasils. Hel bur under eini 
Anari Rim Thorsar, Thridvu Menskir Men. So three roots, Thrior, Röter, stand in three directions, or Thrior Vega, from under the ash of Yggdrasil's, under Yggdrasil the ash tree. Hell dwells under one, Bir under Eni, uh, under another Anari, the frost giants, Rim Thorsar, under a third human men, Minish men, Menskir men. Stanza 32. Rata toskar hetir i korni, erennaskal at aski yggdrasils, arnar or hanskal ovan bera, ok segia nid hokvi nither. So Rata Tosker, of course, Rat Tusk, is named a squirrel who shall run er skal rena at the ash of Yggdrasil. Notice, I said that this was going to happen a lot. Yggdrasil's Oscar, notice we've had four stanzas in a row that have put it in exactly this way. It's very, uh, very prominent description of, or name for the tree in Grimnismal. He shall bear from above Hanskal Bera Ovan words of the eagle or Arnar and say them as understood to Nidhogr below, Nidhogvi Nidr. Nidhogvi in the dative, so he's the recipient of the words from the eagle. Uh, Snorri elaborates and says that Rathasoska runs up and down the tree telling uh, the eagle's insults, the eagle sits at the top, telling the eagle's insults to Nidhogr, Nidhogr the serpent below, and then taking Nidhogr's replies back up to the eagle on the top. 33. Hirtir eru ok fjörir, thers av havingar o gag hosir ganaga, doin ok dvalin dunor ok durathror. Stags, bucks, are also four, so there's also four bucks, who uh, upturn neck, up with upturned necks, gag hosir, gnaw on presumably the tree. What's going on with Havingar, or why Av is there in the second line? Uh, no one knows. Havingar is a word that's never been satisfactorily explained. And then we have the names of the four bucks, or stags, Doin, Dvalin, Dunor, Durathror. Uh, Doin could mean dead, Dvalin could mean delayed, the others are a little harder to do anything with. But it's interesting that those first two names are also given as the names of dwarves elsewhere. 34. Ormar Fleiri Ligia Undir Aski Yggdrasils and that of hygi huer osvidra apa. Go in ok moen, ther eru grav vidnis sinir, gro bakar ok grav volodr, ovnir ok svovnir, hyg ek at askili, mets kvistu mo. All right. More snakes, or worms, or serpents, or dragons, legless creatures, flayli ormar, lie under the Ash of Yggdrasil, than any of the unwise apes, this can be in foolish people or potentially specifically giants, uh, think, Hygi, know it, Hygi thought. And then we have the names of these snakes, Goen and Moen, those are Gravvitnir's sons, again with that Vitnir meaning uh, witness literally, but monster in poetry, so Gravvitnir would be something like grave or dig monster. Grobacher, Greyback, and Grave Volader, Ovnir, and Swovnir, which are interesting names because those are also taken by Odin later in Grimnismal when he is giving a list of his names at uh, stanza 54. Uh, Ovnir could be related to Oven, uh, Oven, and Swovnir to Sveva to sleep, so maybe the heater and the cool and the uh, sleep maker. I think that. They always shall, hig ek at, and then they is understood, uh, at, at, always, skilly, shall, uh, and the subjunctive, scrape is more, somewhat uncommon verb, the branches, kvistu, of the tree, of mather, maths. So those snakes will always be damaging the tree, Yggdrasil. 35. Oskar Yggdrasils, drygir ervivi, mera en men viti, hjörter, Peter Ovan and Ochlidu Funar Skerder Nidhogger Nedan. So Idris's Ashtri endures Driger difficulty Ervidi more than Minno, Mera and Minviti. A stag bites from above, Hjorter Peter Ovan, and on the side, Ochlidu 
Funar flames, and Nidhogr lessens or damages Skerthir from below, Nevon. Stanza 36, we get Valkyrie names, and this is one of these ninth stanzas, so I'll do my best to explain these Valkyrie names. Hrist ok mist vilekat mer hornberi, skegjold ok skogel, hildr ok thruther, lok ok herfjotr, gol ok gerolol, randgrid ok rothgrid, regenleiv, thar bera einherum ol. So Hrist could be related to Hrista shake, mist could be just what it sounds like from uh, mister meaning mist, Skegjold, beard age, or axe age. This is also one of the things we're warned is going to come uh, before Ragnarok and Volospa 44. Uh, so, curious. Skogel could be related to Skaga to project Hildur, of course, common woman's name or Elman woman's name, meaning uh, battle. Thruther means strength. Hlok could be related to Hlaka, a special verb for eagles screening. Her Fjotr to, well, Herr's army, war. Uh, Fjotr could be related to Fjotr, the masculine noun meaning chain, or just possibly to the uh, specialized poetic word Fjotra, meaning woman. Gol could be related to the word uh, noise that we see, for instance, in uh, Gjallarhorn, the yellow horn. Gerolol is hard to explain. The Olol might be some kind of error. Uh, just possibly this could be an error for something like Ger Skogel, which is in the names of Valkyries in Volspa 30. Notice how different those names of Valkyries are than the list here in Grimnismal. Rondgrith and Rothgrith. Rond is shield, roll is counsel. If Grith is a short eye, this could be truce. If it's a long eye, it could be eager, which is probably more likely. So shield, eagle, and counsel, eager. Regenlave, uh, divine survivor. Those there bear, carry, bring to the Ein Herjar beer. <laughs> so. Uh, fantastic names for the Valkyries end with a note that they are the waitresses of Valhol. Well folks, I hope this installment and my read-through of Grimness Mall has been interesting and I hope informative for you. Uh, I'm going to quit today before I get utter heat exhaustion and uh, I will be back next time with uh, more of this. This actually ended up being a fairly cohesive section since we got a lot about Yggdrasil and more about uh, Valhol and Odin's uh, other attributes too. I hope that if you've enjoyed these videos made for free and beautiful places in my Rocky Mountain homeland of Colorado and Wyoming, that you'll consider looking at my Patreon, which helps me uh, very much in finding the time to make these. And uh, I hope you'll check out my published translation of the Poetic Edda, as well as my published translation of the Saga of the Volsungs and the Saga of Ragnar Lothbrok, soon to be followed by the Saga of Herevorn Haithrek with the Saga of Rolf Kraki, as well as a translation of the Prose Edda, um, probably in a couple years. For now, from beautiful Wyoming, I'm wishing you all the best.